This is section 2.1, an introduction to integers. When we talk about integers, we mean positive numbers, negative numbers, and zero. So if we look at a number line, we have zero right in the middle. If we go to the right, we have positive numbers. If we go to the left of zero, we have negative numbers. And right in the middle is zero. So the integers are all the numbers that you see here and also the whole numbers out to the right and the negative whole numbers out to the left of this. Let's look at some specific integers on this number line. For example, we have two of them graphed here. One of them is negative 3. And notice how we write this. We just put a minus sign in front of the 3 and we would call this negative 3. For 3 over here, we can write it either with or without the plus sign and to distinguish it from a negative 3 we would call it positive 3. And notice that 0, since it's right in the middle between the negative numbers and the positive numbers, we don't count 0 as being either positive or negative. So again, here is a whole list of integers. We have everything to the left of 0, everything to the right of 0, and 0. Let's graph some of these integers on the number line. So negative 4 would be right here. 3, or as we could call it, positive 3, is here. Negative 1, 0, and 4, or positive 4. When we're comparing integers, we do the same as we do when we compare whole numbers. So if we look at two integers graphed on a number line, the number to the right is the greater of the two numbers, and the number to the left is the smaller of the two numbers. So let's think about an example here. If we have two integers that we want to compare, so for example, 3 and negative 2. The way that we're going to think about comparing them is by filling that blank in with either a less than symbol or a greater than symbol. First let's graph the two integers on our number line. There's 3 and there's negative 2. And then if we look at where they are in relationship to each other, since the negative 2 is on the left, that means that it is less than the 3. Or the other way we can think about that is that 3 is greater than negative 2. Now since we have the problem written this way, with the 3 here and the negative 2 here, we have to say 3 is greater than negative 2. The other way that we could write a comparison between these two if we had the negative 2 coming first in our expression, we'd say negative 2 is less than 3. So here's some examples. Let's compare these integers. And to do this, again, we're going to, to write in either a less than or a greater than symbol between each of these pairs. So if we look at a number line, if you're going to graph two numbers like 5 and 10 on a number line, you can start with something like 0. You just need to put enough values on there so that you can see the two numbers that you're talking about. Okay, so let's look at this list of all the numbers between 0 and 11. If we graph the 5, there, and here's the 10, that means 5 is the one to the left, which means it's less than 10. So we could fill in that blank with a less than. Okay, let's look at 0 and negative 3. And again, we don't necessarily have to put a whole lot of numbers on our graph, but we need enough to cover the whole area between the two numbers we're talking about. 
So here's the 0, and here's the negative 3. Since 0 comes first in our comparison problem, then we want to look at 0 first and notice that it's to the right of negative 3. The number on the right is the greater number, so that means that 0 is greater than negative 3. Another way to think about this is that the inequality symbol always points to the smaller number. So in this problem, notice that our less than symbol pointed to the 5. In this one, our greater than symbol is pointing this way, so it's pointing to the negative 3. So it's always going to point to the smaller of the two numbers. Okay, let's look at this one now. Now since we have negative 42 and negative 38, again we just want to cover, we want to put enough numbers in our graph so that we cover that. So let's start with negative 44. It's a little hard to write small enough for this. There, that works a little bit better. Okay, so now we have en enough on our number line here that we can see where the, both the negative 42 and the negative 38 are. So we have our negative 42, our negative 38, and since our negative 42 comes first in our inequality statement over here, we want to look at where that is in relationship to the negative 38. Well, it's to the left, so that means that this is going to be a less than. Okay, and finally, negative 22 and positive 22. Now for this, I don't want to graph all of the numbers in between. Let's start with, let's start with negative 24, and we'll just go by twos here. If we graph all the way across here, then at some point over here, we're going to end up at positive 22. So we'd have all these numbers in between, and 0 would be right in the middle. So here's our negative 22, and here's our positive 22. The important thing is just to notice where these two numbers are in relationship to each other. So the negative 22 is to the left of the positive 22, and that makes this a less than. We can also use integers to represent some real life situations. In some cases, we can think of things being negative numbers or positive numbers. So for example, if a scuba diver is swimming 25 feet below sea level, we could represent this by using a negative number. So we could say that they are at negative 25 feet. It's helpful in some cases to think about what a picture of this would look like. So if we had sea level right here and the diver is down here 25 feet below sea level, below is kind of a key word for a negative number. In other words, if someone was above the ocean level, then we'd have a positive number there. Okay, how about this one? The record high temperature for a certain town is 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, we can represent this by, again, just by a positive 113. And last of all, the number of televisions sold reflected a 35% loss from the previous year. When we're talking about money, if we have a gain, that's going to be represented by a positive number. A loss actually translates to a negative number. So if we have a 35% loss, that means that we would have a negative 35%. Now let's talk about absolute value. 
The absolute value of a number is just the number's distance from zero on the number line, the number of units that the number is from zero. And the symbol for absolute value is two vertical lines on either side of the number. So here we have the absolute value of two. If we want to know what that is, if we graph two on the number line, then we look at how far it is from zero. If we count how many units that is, that's two units. So that means that the absolute value of 2 is just 2. Now if we look at the absolute value of negative 2, again if we graph where negative 2 is, and then we look at going from negative 2 to 0, well that's also a total of 2 units distance. So the absolute value of negative 2 is also just 2. What happens with absolute value is that since we're talking about the number's distance from zero, then the absolute value is always going to be either zero or positive. It will never give us a negative value. So for example, if we're finding the absolute value of zero, if we graph zero on the number line, its distance to zero is just zero. As we saw in the, in the last example, if we have a negative number, then the absolute value for that is going to turn out to be a positive number. So for example, if we found the absolute value of negative six, that would be positive 6. So let's simplify some of these. You can do this with or without a number line. The easy thing with positive numbers for absolute value is that you're just going to get the same value back. If we graphed 9 on the number line, we would see that it would be 9 units from 0. So the absolute value of 9 is just 9. Let's look at this one. If we're finding the absolute value of negative 12, again, if we graphed negative 12 on the number line, this would be 12 units from 0. So that means that the absolute value of negative 12 is just 12. Notice what we're doing. If we have a negative inside of the absolute values, all that happens is that negative gets taken off. Now what if we have a negative on the outside of the absolute values? Then when we're simplifying this, we have to think about the order of operations. What we have to do is find the value of this absolute value part first and then apply the negative. So we still have the negative out here. And then if we think about the absolute value of 14, this would be 14 units from 0. So that means that the absolute value of 14 is just 14. So if we simplify that part, we just get 14. We still have that negative out in front. So simplifying this, we end up with an answer of negative 14. Okay, let's look at this one. Now the same thing here, we have a negative on the outside. We also have a negative on the inside. So let's think first about what the absolute value of negative 103 would be. This would be 103 units from 0. Which means that its absolute value would be positive 103. Now if we take the negative that was on the outside, we still have that. It doesn't get affected by the absolute values. So we have the negative from there. And then we found out that simplifying the absolute value of negative 103 gives us 103. So that comes from there. So our final answer is negative 103. Now we can also evaluate expressions using absolute value. So this is just like some of the other problems we've done. If we have the absolute value of negative x, then we can write this with parentheses like we were doing in an earlier chapter. So where the x was, we put a set of parentheses and then we're going to fill that in with the value we're given for x. So we're going to fill that in with negative 25. Now if we have, now if we have two negatives right together like this, 
they actually cancel each other out. If we're simplifying on the inside of our absolute values, that gives us just 25. Then we can figure out our absolute value. And again, 25 is 25 units from 0. So we just end up with 25. One thing to notice is that absolute values act as a grouping symbol, just like parentheses or fraction bars. So if we have more complicated problems where we're having to simplify, then we would work inside of the absolute values first as part of our order of operations. Okay, and one more. If we fill this in with the parentheses, then we're going to replace our x with negative 8. Now we can write this with or without the parentheses since there's only one value right there. So let's take the parentheses off. That means that now we're trying to find the absolute value of negative 8. And negative 8 is 8 units from 0. So that means the value of this is just 8. Now if we have two numbers that are the same distance from 0 on the number line, but are on the opposite sides of 0, those two numbers are called opposites. So before where we had graphed negative 3 and positive 3, notice that if we look at how far each of these is from 0 on the number line, negative 3 is 3 units from 0, and positive 3 is also 3 units from 0. So that makes these two values opposites of each other. So let's look at some opposites. The opposite of 7, if we think about this with a number line, if we have 7 over here, we want to go all the way down to 0. So that's going to be 7 units from 0. If we want to find the opposite of 7, we need to go 7 units the other direction from 0. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 7. So that means that the opposite, opposite of 7 is negative 7. Now we already have our picture drawn for this one. The opposite of negative 7, we know that negative 7 is 7 units from 0. And the number on the other side of 0, that's 7 units away, is positive 7. And the same way if we think about the opposite of negative 23, if we went from negative 23 to 0, is a total of 23 units on our number line. So if we went 23 units from 0 to the right, that gets us to positive 23. So that means the opposite of negative 23 is positive 23. So notice in all of these three that all we're doing to get the opposite is that we're changing the sign. So if we start out with a positive, then we're changing it to a negative to get the opposite. If we start with a negative, then we're changing that to a positive to get the opposite. The one exception to this is if we're looking at the opposite of zero. Since zero is neither negative or positive, then if we're thinking about how far 0 is from 0, it's 0 units. So the opposite of 0 is just 0.